Okay, great. All right, here we are. I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> um, I loved our conversation last week. Uh, I'm really excited to have you here as part of uh, this interview series, this guest series. I, I really think of it as a global thought leader series um, more than anything else, really who are uh, catalyst leaders, people who are, who are really committed to what they're doing, causing change within businesses, but really in lives. Um, because you know, within businesses, there's people, there's humans. And um, what you're committed to really, what I, what I see in terms of um, leadership from the core, which is your business, is really focused on how to empower leaders, which, you know, even if it's not C-level executives or whatnot, you're really empowering the entire organization, how to work together, how to bring um, the human centricity to create high-performing cultures. So it's not onesie twosies, it's really teams and it's really how to bring that together. So uh, what we're gonna be talking about today really is uh, the profitable leader and uh, how to really create proven business growth, which you have, which I, I loved your story, and also in regard to uh, creating cultures of successful teams. Because really, it's really about we and it's really about how we do this together. So, um, but you're great just in regards to the, the um, leadership from the core and your thought leadership in terms of um, you know, syndicated com columnists in terms of 1.5 million, um, uh, what was the word that we used? Readership. Readership, yes. I mean, and I researched a lot about you actually, and um, there's just so many more people following you and you're really brilliant out there what you speak. So I wanted to have you on here to, to through the lens of the profitable leader, because it's not just always about money, but it's really how do businesses, whether you're one person, whether you're you know, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 people, how do you succeed in a space from um, profitability? And what does that mean to you? So I wanted to, because I thought you had a great perspective on that. And I wanted that mm. to open that up from you. And I wanted everyone to hear your story. So, yes. um, so thank you. Thank you for taking this time with me. Well, thank you, first of all, for creating the space for these authentic conversations to happen. And I'm honored that you chose me to be here. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, share with us. Um, share with us your story. You know, really, I liked. Uh, and also share with us what's going on with you now too, because <laughs> I want to actually bring that up first and foremost. Is that you've, and I won't say it, you can you can say it however you like. Uh, but you have just gone through something major, which has altered you and your family's lives, and yet you have still shown up to this conversation to this in service of others where you didn't have to you there's a lot of chaos going on in your life mm -hmm. and you're displaced etc so you share that but i just wanted to one give gratitude to you and also uh say you're an example of a leader you're showing up as a leader in this space of even having chaos and breakdown in your life and you can do that right it doesn't have to be full-blown breakdown so i'll let you share that uh, along with your story but Thank you for showing up with that. And it really gives me, mm. um, it shows me how to show my life as well. Uh, when, mm. there's, when there's breakdown and, and literal breakdown. <laughs> so, right. yeah. So yeah, go so ahead we'll, and start wherever you like. Great. We'll talk about, uh, so the, the, the present moment right now, and then I'm going to go flashback Perfect. and go down memory lane about how this whole story started with uh, where my business is now. Because there's a backdrop to that. But right now, <laughs> if you look behind me, I'm in an office that is not mine. Why am I sitting in someone else's office? Yeah. Because we're displaced. Uh, on Easter Sunday, mm. a EF3 tornado, uh, I live in Chattanooga, and uh, unexpectedly, with the weatherman saying, it's, with, the, with the weatherman on the air, as I'm watching on my Facebook app, the, the news channel, he is saying, yeah, we're past this nothing to worry about to all of a sudden Chattanooga take shelter we have just been hit by a tornado and I had 30 seconds to get my son out of bed run across the room and meet my wife just in time to dive into our walk-in closet before the windows literally exploded and things were flying around the room and it was complete chaos so yeah we were short cut us a uh, long long story short we were hit wow. by a tornado the wind speed was about 145 miles an hour when it hit us and uh we our garage flew away <clears throat> about 20 30 feet away 
So we lost all of our belongings in our garage. Um, our roofs, roof has to be replaced. Uh, carpets have to be stripped. So the house is still intact, but it's not livable. Yeah. And so that explains why I'm uh, in someone else's office yeah. to take this call <laughs> and not my own. Um, and so the, the story there is that, as I was telling you a little bit offline, is that um, in leadership, we rise to the occasion, right? And yeah, we're, we have to be willing to accept as well, because I am I'm much, uh, I am very much of a giver. Well, in this scenario, we had to extend our hands out to say, it's time to receive. Yeah. Because we are in need. And so, um, so gratitude is something that uh, we, um, we put into practice, for, you know, for the last you know, week and a half, two weeks since this thing hit. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, the day that it hit, it was amazing. I mean, we had people, friends, neighbors, complete strangers coming to us, literally handing us money. And, wow. and uh, in order for us to experience true um, giving and generosity, we have to be able to accept it as well. So right. that was a great lesson. Right. Um, and, and then the lesson of gratitude as well, um, you know, that, that uh, spoke volumes to, um, you know, people rising to the occasion in times of tragedy, uh, everyone it, coming together as a community. And I, yeah. might, I might add in a COVID uh, era, that was thrown out the window because yeah. in the middle of a tornado, yeah. you're not worried about six foot distancing. You're right. neighbor helping neighbors. I mean, cars overturned and you right. want to make sure people are safe. Uh, so yeah, so that was a, a really interesting uh, thing there. So yeah, yeah. so and I, I didn't want that to disrupt my life, my life. Yeah. And so we bounce back. We do what we can to, uh, you know, pick up the pieces literally yeah. and figuratively. Yeah. Um, you know, the insurance is going to help us with, replacing lots lots of things but in the meantime life has to go on right uh right. and i'm yeah i'm in deep deep gratitude to everyone that has uh, that has uh, come to our aid um and now i'm doing what i can to create this horrible situation to an opportunity now yeah. to continue to serve and be there for other people yeah uh, because lives were lost we yeah. you know we were spared Right. And uh, some homes were completely decimated. So, uh, so now we're in a position of, okay, who can we help and serve as well in, right. in this situation? So. Which is, ma I mean, so magical that and I hear so many, so many nuggets of gold in that, right? Mm -hmm. Just in terms of not just in life, but in business, right? Is one, um, you, had you had 30 seconds to try to save your life. I mean, who knows what would have happened, right? But you yeah. decided, here, we need to go do this then there's destruction and what happens is that and i just got chills what just happened was and we like we talked about for instance the profitable leader profitable leader is not money is not just money your community your people around you stepped up as your team like you said covid went out the door and people said we are your family we, oh, i got chills again you may we may not even know you we may know you may say hi on the street but they showed up as your teammates they said, it doesn't really matter. They showed up as your teammates. And what's interesting, because uh, you focus so much on culture, right? And, and high-performing teams. Right then and there, everyone became a high-performing team. And, and the culture came together because there was, what I'm hearing is in service of others, is love, is support. And as a leader, and, and I, I can identify with this wholeheartedly, is as being a founder myself, I have to really be intentional about allowing myself to receive because I do so much myself and I, and I in service, service of others. So I think you bring up a great point, which is one, people showed up as your teammates right then and there, right? And there were no questions asked. And then secondly, as a leader yourself, because you provide for so many, I mean, you go into work organizations, you, you write about it, you support others to high perform and to come together in unifying cultures. And you had that show up for you. So it's a test, I think it's a testament to you that you show up for others that way and others showed up for you that way. And it's just amazing. Yeah. And I, and I speak only just from our own personal tragedy of having mother nature show up in full force. Yeah. Right. But we've, we've been experiencing um, the, you know, the coronavirus uh, era that we're in great leaders and great cultures have not changed. They have 
pivoted, obviously, mm -hmm. to uh, you know a remote uh, setting and leveraging technology like we're doing right now to right. Uh, to continue to to uh, create value at work and bring people together to make products and you know business yeah. still goes on. Um, but those leaders are what they're doing is they're creating virtual communities mm -hmm. of practice, uh, and they are still. Um, they are still practicing compassion. So mm. that's the word, that's the word that isn't, okay. isn't tossed around very, uh, very much because it's very sure. soft and, and fuzzy. Um, but we know from the science that compassion uh, has a powerful effect on people. So in times of crisis, it's, uh, it's the, the leaders or leadership team that basically says, okay, it, it, our people have needs. Yeah. And we need to figure out what those needs are and remove the obstacles from their path because there's suffering going on right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speak yeah. to that. Speak to that actually with it. And I think that's such, it's such a great point because compassion is seemed to be fluffy and it's actually far more than fluffy. It's so powerful. It's the core, right? If we don't have connection and we want have compassion for others, we're on a solo journey and actually we're never on a solo journey. So I would love for you to speak to that through your own business and what you do. And mm -hmm. one thing I heard you say was, res uh, you didn't say the word, but resilience, right? So speak to that within uh, what you do in terms of um, leadership from the core and in terms of like the profitability of a leader, like how they need to show up. Like, what do you teach them? Like, what do you think that the, the core of a leader is to really be able to build teams like, like your neighbors who showed up for you? They didn't have to. They did not have to show up for you, but they did. And again, it's them, but it's also you. And it's the same thing in business, right? Is your employees, your teams will show up for you if you yeah. show up for them. So that's compassion. I would love for you to share that with your business. Yeah, I, I think that it's inherent in, it's in our design. It's in our DNA to show up with our humanity um, in, in times of, of crisis and upheaval, like, you know, uncertainty and all that uh, during times of fear, right? Yeah. But when we are not in times of uncertainty and fear and doubt, we don't compartmentalize or we should not compartmentalize ourselves so that we're, we have a nice neat little box where it's, uh, you know, this is our, our outside work existence. Mm -hmm. And then once we mm -hmm. come into our work, when we actually do come back to our buildings and our offices, et cetera, those that don't work remotely, right. we don't compartmentalize and say, oh, okay, now I have to put on a mask and show up as right. the boss and treat people like I used to treat it. So this is a great opportunity to shift ourselves once we return back to normalcy right. um, to show up as what, what, the tr what true leadership theory and practice is, has been saying now for decades, Alana. It's not, right. it's, this isn't, this isn't uh, you know, newsflash. No, we've been, right. we have been t telling ourselves and, and science has been informing us that the best leaders show up with their authenticity, right? Mm. So, yep. um, so I'm going to, I'm going to track back to why my company started on why yeah. did I be Yes. Tell that story. I love it. So, so the, the company name, and this is not a, a, a shameless plug or anything. I'm just, this is a, a frame of reference. Of it's leadership from the core. What's that about? Cause I get asked about how did you come up with the name leadership from the core? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, yeah. the core of who we are is every it's, it's leading from within ourselves from the inside out. And when you get to the core of who we are, we get to our heart. Now, Agreed. now that already sounds a little too, way too soft and fuzzy for a lot of people. But when you lead from your heart and your head, uh, and you have that proper balance, then you have a great leader. And, right. and so when I, as I went through the corporate ranks, and finally in 2013, I got laid off of my last cushy um, a high level HR job. I was uh, spearheading talent management for a, a bunch of companies and every, everything that, uh, all of the, the high turnover and the toxic work environments that I looked at when I looked at the data, cause I re I, I did all the exit interviews and I I'm looking at trends Yeah. and everything pointed back to leadership. One company in particular had 60% turn turnover. So I looked under the hood. Hmm. Why is it that these people are, are just can't, can't retain their, their employees? Reason number five pointed back to the CEO. Well, the CEO yes. then is, is creating this culture of fear yeah. 
yes. and control that is squashing the human spirit of people. And so whenever I would sit down and say, oh, well, tell me what was your experience like? I would hear things like it was suffocating. I, I, I had no voice. Um, I was walking on eggshells, uh, you know, all of those corporate cliches. Right. Uh, thrown under the bus, you right. know, backstabbing. <laughs> yes. and, uh, basically all, those great, all those great ones. <laughs> right. And what they're really saying is, is that nobody respected me. Nobody yeah. valued me. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't treated like an equal. Yeah. I was so in my opinion wasn't valued things like that and so as I started to do re the research um, the counter to those toxic management behaviors always pointed back to servant leadership and yeah. for, for those of us that don't aren't familiar with servant leadership one minute um, yeah. education here okay yeah. so back in um in the, in the 70s, a guy by the name of Robert Greenleaf wrote a, a, a book. It wasn't even a book. It was a, you know, it was a, a short book uh, called The Servant as Leader. And he says that the best leaders serve first. And they, they lead out of that, um, out of that uh, uh, desire to serve others first. And so in doing that, people become loyal followers, yes. committed followers. And, uh, and so that's what creates the high performance uh, organizations because now people are coming to work and they're leaving their homes and they're telling their wives or husbands or spouses whatever say I can't wait to get to work today because I right. love I love what I do and I love who I work for right um, and, I have a question I have a question yeah. for you in that space because you use the word compassion how would a team how would a, a, a team of people employees contractors whomever whoever a company is about how would they see that leader show up like, what would they do? Like, what, when you coach them, how do they show up for uh, those, those people? What does authenticity mean? Mm -hmm. That means a person who is transparent in their communication. Yeah. So um, that means that even if they have bad news, they show up with um, being transparent about what's going, really going on. Yeah. Uh, because a lot, of, a lot of leaders, especially in this era, um, they are afraid of losing power control, uh, respect, and so they, they don't come out with the truth, right. whatever that truth is. Right. And so what that creates for employees is even more doubt. Right. Because now they don't know what's really going on and are they telling us the truth? And so the, the best leadership, when, when we're talking about how do you show up with authenticity, you do whatever it takes to build trust. Trust is the pinnacle of the mountain, Okay. And the pathway to get to a high trust organization, which will lead to a becoming a profitable leader slash company, yes, is all of, all of the things that we know leaders do the, those behaviors um, that lend to high performance. You value the uh, the voice of your employees. You ask for their opinions yes. and insights, and you ask for their ideas, right? giving employees their voice is very important for in high engagement yes. because it speaks to them. I value you enough that I don't have all the answers. Right. So I need you to tell me what would we do in this situation? Some, some leaders will say, Oh, Marcel, no, that's, I draw, that's where I draw the line because now they're right. going to overstep their boundaries and I will lose my, my power as a, as a leader. Well, it mm. does just the opposite. It creates community. Agreed. Where employers are saying, hey, my leader is human. He's actually, he, yes. she uh, is actually comfortable enough and vulnerable enough to come down in our level and help us figure this thing out together as a team. Yeah. Instead yep. of sitting up in the ivory tower and handing down decisions, right? Yep, right? exactly. As I call it, uh, well, one, I hear partnership and what you're saying is that just because they're a CEO, leader, whatnot, doesn't they see these people as partners, not as you versus me, I'm up here, you're down there. And right. the other thing I, I talk about too in the world is creating we cultures where it's we win versus you and me, right? Yeah. It's we together. So I, I identify exactly with what you're saying. So let me add something to that. Partnership also implies ownership. So you're Great. giving ownership for your employees to make decisions on that on their own. So this this speaks to the model that I teach and coach uh, leaders, which is really called shared leadership, right? Pretty self-explanatory. Yep. So you give ownership to your employees. Steve Jobs said a long time ago before his death that he 
uh, it, you know, we're in the knowledge economy in the tech industry. He hires people that know more than he does and he gets mm -hmm. out of the way. Yes. So in a, in a way he's telling, he's saying, I hire people to tell me what to do. Right. Um, because in, in the knowledge economy, there, there's people in front lines that actually know more than their managers. Managers have to be humble enough to say, I'm okay with that. Right. And I'm going to support my employees, my people to do whatever it takes for them to get the job done right. so I can set them up for success. Right. Now talk up. So that, that is the, so, so, I mean, speaking of the high profitable organizations, that's the whole chain. Yes. Right. We talk Agreed. about first is empowering our people to succeed, yep. which when they do, they create high, you create high performance for them. You, you set the conditions necessary for them to go above and beyond. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, they release discretionary effort across the enterprise. Right. And when you do that, man, it's like pro <laughs> productivity is, it, becomes, it gets oh, yeah. at an all time high. Oh yeah. I mean the, I've seen cultures like that on both sides where, and even before they're hired, I see leadership wanting to hire people. You know, they're not looking for people who are, who are, uh, you know, big at what they do and, and they consider their partners. They want people who check boxes. And I see those companies just kind of make it. And, and the leaders, like you said, Steve Jobs or the other leaders that say, I want people who know what I don't know and I'm going to empower them. So yeah. to your point, they just, I mean, the trajectory goes from here to here when it comes to leaders like that. Exactly. When they are, when they look at people as, um, I want people who know different and more than me and I'm going to empower that. Yeah. And those leaders are the ones that, you know, the nine, there's 90% what of startups that and businesses that fail in the first one to three years. It, that we can change history, but leaders need to take that ownership, I think, a lot earlier, and they can, right? They don't have to wait until they fail, right? right. So, yeah, yeah I yeah, agree with yeah. that. Yeah, and so the way to pivot from this COVID era, and yeah. once we move out of the COVID era, and I'm hopeful that we will, yep. uh, it's a great opportunity for those managers to, now we're talking about mindset, this is very mm -hmm. difficult, okay? I'm speaking to a different mindset. Um, and for those leaders that are just, just have a window open, a small, even if it's in a tiny window of uh, that, where they can see, hmm, you know what, and Mar Marcel and all of the research that's going on, it, it, it probably means that I can become a better leader. It's going to take yes. that person to release control first. And that's a very hard thing to do because um, it, it, we still live in an era where micromanagement is still prevalent. Uh, Fear-based management structures are still prevalent. Unfortunately, that's still right. the case. Right. But here's a great opportunity to pivot once we move out of the COVID era. Right. Exactly. And even to your point of business aside, what you're what you dealt with with your with the in your house and your family being displaced. Imagine if you were the leader, because you're always a leader. Imagine if you were the leader that that resisted it, didn't receive, didn't allow other people to step up into their greatness and support you. And I always see it as you know, if, if it's, it's a reciprocatory type of empowerment is that my receiving as a leader, which takes me something <laughs> for sure, it takes something. Yet if I squash someone else's desire or action to support me and step up into their leadership, I squash their, their leadership capabilities and their life. So it's really a back and forth is my, my allowance to receive, like your allowance to receive and that allows them to rise up into their greatness as well. And I think businesses and mm. leadership that, that see that as if I don't allow them to step into their leadership, I just squash their, not just their work life, their entire life, because we spend so much time. And I think what you do is so important because our core doesn't leave. Like your leadership from the core, like you said, your leadership inside and outside. It, it, you are the same human. And so bring that to the, your entire part of your life. I think what you're saying is so important. Mm. Thank you for that. I agree. Yeah. So um, in terms of, so in regard to, um, so there's proven business growth within that. And we talked a lot about that and creating cultures and really how to, how to step out as a leader. Um, it was there a defining moment, like within your business or whatnot that you went, aha, and there was, ah, this is where I'm going to step into my leadership where you, where you had that moment or like when you said, aha, leadership from the core, or you made that 
direct pivot um, into going from great leader to, you know, to really elevated leader. Because there are the different steps. There's that moment that, that leader takes that, that humble state and that open state and says, I'm going to take that leap. Well, even the, even the, the, the leadership roles that I was in, because I remember, I mean, I used to be that person where um, I had direct reports and I always thought, oh, you know, I have to create some space mm. because I'm the boss. And so I have to create that space so that they'll respect me. So I have to elevate myself above them because my, uh, because my status is that of a direct at the time, uh, you know, director, whatever, uh, senior manager and, uh, and their employees. And right. so I have to be seen in a different light, you know, <laughs> da, da, da. Right. you have the cape and you, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, um, and so I, ha I learned that one time an employee fell off the wagon and did something that, uh, caused me to have to terminate that person. A while later, as we got to talk, you know, we, we spoke off the record, became friends, and, and I was reflecting back on, you know, what, what could have happened differently? Yeah. And she said, you know, if I had known you better, oh, interesting. I probably wouldn't have done what I did, but I didn't wow. trust you as my boss. That is Man, talk about, uh, wow. you know. Yeah, talk about a, a, a ton of bricks falling in your head because then I realized, well, I don't want to be that person where my own employees don't trust me. What's yeah. thing about me? And so when, <laughs> and so as I moved up the ranks, et cetera, I then became the employee who then reported to a high level executive <clears throat> and his name was Bruce. And Bruce was everything that I not only imagine in the boss, but experienced as my best boss to this day. This was, I'm going back 15 years before I went into my own practice, et cetera. And Bruce demonstrated the exact traits of a leader that we've been talking about here. Mm. Um, you know, he gave me ownership of my work. Um, he, he would show up and, and sit down with me and mentor me for an hour to an hour and a half out of his own time. When he wow. could have been do, busy doing his own strategy stuff, no, he would sit down with me and say, this is what's going on and here's how I can make you better. And, and he would expose me hmm. to different um, job responsibilities to stretch yeah. my growth. And I loved that because I, I grew faster than in any other period in my life, right? So here I was, reference point, I'm like, wow, <laughs> what made Bruce such an yeah. awesome boss? And then I, as I read the literature, I realized that Bruce was a servant leader. So I connected the dots, yeah. and then that began my research. Well, wait a minute, I'm, we're onto something here. Because I, I, I was engaged yeah. at such a high level, not only intellectually, but emotionally. So I was yep. engaged up here in the head and down here in the heart. Um, and, uh, and so that began my, my whole, let's, let's, uh, let's see what I can create out of this. And then in my infancy right. stages, I created leadership from the core. And, you know, back then, it took three to five years to uh, elevate my, uh, my company to where, where it is now on, sort of on a global scale. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, nobody starts, I, I had to start somewhere and I, I but I, I had to have a baseline yeah. for leading people to their true North. Right? right. And, and I always point back to the Bruce as that person right. that, that was a kind of the catalyst, uh, cause I, I had a true living, breathing human being as a reference point. It wasn't just theory or something I read in the book. Yep. I experienced it. And right. now I wanted to be that, I wanted to be Bruce for other people. And I began to adapt that model as well. And people started to respond. And then finally I said, now I got to teach, I got to teach other people this model. And that's yeah. when leadership from the core began. And now I, I'm yeah. up to Well, I love it. Um, and well, thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce, for being the leader. If I could say thank you to Bruce right now, wherever he is. Thank you, Bruce, for being who you are, because Yad Marshall showed up, and yeah. you bringing this to the world. And actually, one other thing that I, two things that um, came up while you were talking. One is um, the, the great point for business owners, leaders, whomever, 
you saw in Bruce, you were, he, okay, I'll start, I'll actually go back to the first point. He mm. invested in you because I have, I have this, this thing about leaders and, and businesses need to invest in their number one asset, which is their people. It, you can have an amazing product, but if you have no people that show up big for you, your product is not going to go anywhere, right? And so Bruce was the leader that gave you uh, freedom to be yourself. He, he gave you time. He gave you uh, space. He gave you all the things that you like. And actually, what's interesting is, as you talked about top down, you became more like Bruce. And you actually, Bruce has impacted exactly what you've brought up with your business. Correct. And so every business owner, every leader, what they see happening underneath them is a direct reflection of who they are. And so I, I talk to a lot of business owners and they wonder, you know, why is the breakdown in the organization? What's happening? We have 20, 30% turnover, or I keep hiring the wrong people. And it's not a blame thing. It's more of a take a moment and look within and look to see how you're leading. Bruce led like this and look how you showed up. So he invests. And like you said, he didn't have to take that time. He didn't have to take time, but he invested in you probably. I put words in Bruce's mouth, but he knew how important you were just as a human being, right? He wasn't saying, how can I use this person? He's saying, this person's showing up for me. I'm going to show up for them. And I'm mm. going to invest my time, invest my resources, invest whatever it is so that Marcel has his life. Not just I have my business. And I think for you with the core, with the compassion is bringing it all back to that is as a leader, right? Is having that compassion of these are not resumes and these are not, you know, titles. These are human beings who are giving their life to your business or, or your neighbors giving their life to you. You know, give them, in, uh, invest in your people, invest in their time, invest in who they are as a person. So Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Great. For, I love, I love how you, how he, um, he impacted you in such a way. And it's such a testament to how a leader shows up and you're now creating that in the world. And, uh, you, you saw yourself able to be more of who you actually are authentically because yeah. he showed up and supported that, which is beautiful. And you have stated that more beautiful than I could have. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I, I heard it come out it, again, it wasn't just, and this is, a, in my opinion, the, one of the greatest leadership aspects is it doesn't just come from your thoughts. It doesn't just come from your brain. It's got to come from inside, yeah. you know, uh, and people, people recognize that very quickly if you're yeah. leading from here. So um, yeah, that was easy for me to get because <laughs> you come from, you come from that, but uh, I'm so happy Bruce shut up in mm. your life. Mm. Um, so what advice would you and you've given a bunch of different things, but if you had to, um, and you know, there's different, and I say profitable leader, I say profitable leadership, um, strong cultures and, and, and growth and whatnot. But there's some people out there that consider themselves to be a leader. And there's some people that are kind of going, well, I, I want to be, and I think I am. And, and whether they be a one person company saying, oh, I want to hire a contractor, or there's a, uh, you know, a, a 50 person company or a 5,000, whatever they might be and whatever role, it doesn't have to be that they're a CEO. It doesn't have to be they're a CTO. They could be, um, you know, a, a senior software engineer. They could be whatever. They are a leader. And no matter who you are in a business, you can show up that way. So what for everybody, because no matter what you impact people around you, what I guess final advice would you give to them? that they can take on right now and look inward and go, who can I be today um, differently and show up and then watch the, watch the impact that they make around them. What could they see? There is a, a friend of mine who wrote a book. Uh, well, he's written uh, two books, Joy Inc. And the chief joy officer, his name is Rich Sheridan. He is the yep. uh, CEO of Menlo Innovations. He's going to be a guest, by the way. Fantastic. <laughs> tell, tell him I said hi. I will, for sure. <laughs> Rich says that you have to pump the fear out of the room. It's a, a metaphor for basically removing fear from the organization. Yes. Um, because fear is, is, you know, they say that, yeah, fear is, is a good motivator. Well, yeah, if you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, yeah. 
um, fear strips you of your ability to think and perform because you lose, you've lost safety. Yes. And psychological safety is one of the most required things in, in a high performing, high profitable culture, company culture. Yeah. Um, people need to feel safe. Okay. And, and when people are, are, are fearing, or they're looking over their shoulder and, uh, and communication is not traveling in all directions, uh, in, in, in fear is instilled in, in them. And maybe it's because of the micromanagement. Mm -hmm. um, that is going to hurt your business. Um, and so my first advice is always to remove the fear. You define what fear is for you because you, most of you listening would, if you're in a, a management role, you know your style and you know um, what you're doing. So I, I would <laughs> say that that's the, that's the first, first and True. foremost advice is, yeah. is remove the fear from your business, whether it's how you communicate, how you structure your meetings, yeah, uh, and what's what expectations people have of you, and et cetera. So. Right, and that mindset, like you said before, the mindset of what mindset are you bringing? Are you bringing a fearful? Because a lot of times leaders lead with their own fear in mind. And, that's true, and then they generate that outward. So yeah, right, and that's a a whole new conversation about self leadership yeah. and what yeah. is going on inside people's brains that's causing them to say, I need to lead, I need to lead with an iron fist. Yeah. That's something, uh, because those leaders are, are, they are expressing some kind of unresolved insecurity, which is why they're leading through fear. There's right. something there that, that they haven't closed up. So, right. Exactly. So yeah. And to that point too is, is, uh, you know, to finalize, I think that's brilliant, is really to, to add you as a leader, whether or not your management or not, is to really look inside and, and then look outside and see, see how people are reacting and acting. Yeah. You know, if you see team and collaboration and a we culture, you're probably doing something pretty well. But if mm -hmm. you see people working kind of separately and whatnot, you, and it's not as to say, hey, you're bad and wrong. It's just to say, hey, what am I doing to foster that? Because you are. That's just, that's just the way that it is. What happens around you is, is, is an impact of yourself. So I think that's a great, that's a great lesson is you gotta, you gotta get fear out of the, out of the organization for sure. That's a, that'll kill you right from the, from the get go for sure. An organization. It's very, very short sighted uh, thinking. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. So amazing. Um, no, this was great. Any, any last words? And also I would love to open it up because uh, your brilliance, I'm one, so excited to be able to bring this to the world, et cetera. And also now um, just as a, as a person in my life to bring you around the world and where I see that you can make an impact. Is there anything you want to share that um, if anyone's listening here, whoever's listening, um, that you can offer, that there's going to be an offer for you to, to, for them? Absolutely. You know, I, in the times that we're in, especially, I mean, uh, you know, if COVID-19 wasn't bad enough uh, in, mm -hmm. in my, in my most immediate world, uh, let's throw in a tornado and now we're having a party, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but um, that has not stopped me from wanting to give back. And, uh, and so I am offering any company group organization that would like to bring me in, into a conversation uh, over Zoom whether it's, you know, for a, your leadership team, executive team, or employees, if you need somebody to come and speak, uh, speak in terms of this, that yeah. this conversation, I would love to offer myself free of charge. You just give me an invitation. Beautiful. And I'd be happy to contribute to uh, this, this higher form of leadership. I think it's so crucial now for us to pivot to a new model of leadership, uh, to a higher form of leadership. And I would like to speak on, uh, on behalf of those people open enough to want to invite me in, to invite me into their Zoom rooms. Yeah, <laughs> we can still create connection here. I mean, yeah. um, even between you and I, where we've never met in person, uh, there's still that compassion and love and connection and, and core resonance. So we can get beyond the Zoom. We can get beyond the computer. So yes, yeah, yeah. so, so I think that's great. I, I, I think it'd be, um, and that's a really generous offer to, to give that and to lead as that servant leader to, to, for, for organizations to, um, 
to have that opportunity to, to connect with you. And even if hour, two hours, whatever it might be, to have that opportunity without the pressure, without the, hey, I got to have to pay you all this thousands of dollars is just for you to be present with them. I think it's a big, um, huge win for them to be able to just have that conversation and to see potential blind spots, uh, what's working, what's not working, and um, see what's possible. I think that's amazing. Yeah, I, th I think I'm eliminating about 10 steps of uh, having to go through all of the, <laughs> the gatekeepers and then yes. having to fly out to meet somebody. Uh, no, here we are. Let's just have a conversation and let's make it work for you in your organization. I'd be happy to be part of that, that conversation. Perfect. Awesome. Um, no, this was so amazing. I am, uh, I am again, so honored that you, <laughs> I'm so honored that you uh, stood up and you still showed up for this. Um, and what you have to say is just so powerful. And I'm so excited for it to weave even more. You're definitely the present and the future, I believe, of business and how business leaders can really look at themselves uh, and how they, they, they grow their organizations and the profitability is not just money. It's sure that's the end game, but really that's one of the end games, but their profitability are their people and the cultures that they create and the culture that they create inside. Um, so their high performing team starts within, I think, as, as you're saying, you know, so I really, really appreciate you being on here. Um, and again, you guys, you and I will have a long, a long relationship for, uh, ahead and um, yeah, if anyone else uh, wants to connect with Marcel, you can connect with him. Um, how can they reach you? MarcelSchwantes.com is my website. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Marcel Schwantes, Twitter, at Marcel Schwantes. Uh, where else? I think that's about they, it. Um, they can also see your articles written. Uh, yeah, Inc.com. And okay. then type in the search box, Marcel Schwantes, and you'll see my column. Awesome. Yeah. And I've read a lot of his articles and they are brilliant. So to what he speaks about, go ahead and um, you can read a lot about and how to infuse into your life immediately because what, what you really teach and what you, what you serve is immediate impact for people. So I think that's really important. So, um, okay. but thank you so much for today. I really uh, appreciate it. And I'm so excited for you to be part of this and any of the future um, of business. And uh, thank you so much for doing what you do. Thank you for creating, again, this platform for us to engage in this discussion. I, I am so honored. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Great. Um, and then I will talk to you soon. And thank you, everyone, for showing up. Uh, the Profitable Leader Summit is amazing. Uh, and show up to the other 20 leaders that are showing up. Marcel and the others, everyone is just absolutely magical. You won't want to miss any of them. I've just been in awe of everybody and it's global. So it's not just in one place within the world. It's, uh, it's all over the globe, all different types of leadership, all different types of businesses. And I'll tell you, it all starts from the core for every one of them and you get a different story for each. So it's, um, it's pretty brilliant. So yeah, so show up to the other ones and thank you again, Marcel. Uh, I really appreciate thanks. you. Thanks everyone. <laughs> yeah, thanks.